Hey, what's up, everybody? BDL44 coming at you another video. All right, so I'm just coming here to tell you guys I'm excited about the Lakers playing. This has been a very interesting couple of days for me in regards to the Lakers because I've wanted them to play, and Lakers basketball has not been on. It's only been, what, a couple of days, but I just really, really, really have had an interest in seeing this team <clears throat> since we made these trades, and it just seems like they can't come back to the court fast enough. That's where we're at with it, and that's an entirely different feeling than what I felt watching my team over the last several years. Um, dating back even to probably the bubble, I didn't feel this type of in, uh, desire to watch my squad play. I'll watch my team. I have, you know, love and passion for the, for, the, for the squad, just like I've had since I was nine years old. But I ain't going to sit here and act like every season I've enjoyed every unit that we've had. There's been a good, good portion of years that I wasn't in love with the unit that we had that particular season, but I just rock with it because I'm a Laker fan. After making these trades, you guys, I'm telling you, this is a team that I want to see play. If I still played video games, even though I don't, maybe one day I'll pick up the sticks again. But if I still play video games, this is a team I want to use all the time, <laughs> whether they're the Lakers or happen to be running around in a different uniform. This is one of them teams that I would want to play with in a video game. So I'm telling you, that I'm ready for Lakers basketball. <laughs> I'm, I'm about as ready for Lakers basketball as I've ever been in my adult life, man. This is just a fun basketball team to watch. Uh, since we've made the trade, from what I understand, we're the number one overall defensive team in the NBA. Of course, that's skewered by the fact that we've played teams that have been hobbled, but you just got to be excited about everything that has to do with this team right now in regards to the moves that we've made, the way the team looks, and now you're just hopeful that uh, you know everything falls into place from here. You don't want to bring any negativity into the situation. We've obviously removed some players that didn't fit with the squad. Now it's just about the <clears throat> coach and, and, and him, you know, finding synergy with the new guys and finding a way through some of the old uh, mistakes that he made early on this rookie seasons for him. So, you know, this Dallas game is a huge test. And I'm telling you, we're an hour away and, you know, I'm, I'm just ready. I'm ready to watch the game. I don't. I don't think I've been this excited about watching basketball in a while, and it's not even about who we're going to see. I can care less who's on the other side, honestly. I just want to watch my team play somebody. And, um, you know, given the fact that we're playing the Dallas Mavericks, just makes it an, uh, an extra, you know, emph emphasis, I guess, for myself because I'm a big Kyrie Irving fan. So I'm looking forward to seeing him um, hopefully have a calmer than usual night. I don't want to see him go off against us. I want to see us shut him down if at all possible. So, Hopefully he doesn't play all that great, but I do look forward to seeing Dallas Mavericks just in general laying eyes on their team and seeing how this thing is coming along for them. <clears throat> seeing if they can, uh, if they have any shot at holding on to their sixth seed or staying in the playoffs. Um, and I think they do. I'm, I'm not going to sit up here and say that, that I don't think that. I think that they have enough pieces in place to keep them above the rest of the freight. I think that what after the trades that we've made on paper, We've just jumped above a lot of those teams, and Dallas is one of them. You know, two weeks ago, are we better than Dallas? No. Today, are we better than Dallas? Yes. And it's just that simple. The trades we made should, in theory, make us a better team than them. Um, and so that's what I expect to see us come out and, and display that. We've played more ball than them, um, and we know ourselves a bit more than them right now, based on uh, how much they've played since the trade they've made to bring in Kai. Um, I'm also looking to see, <clears throat> and not much has been said about this, and I think it's because he doesn't play very much. He didn't play very much this season. Uh, but I'm, I'm looking to see how Dallas does without um, the players they traded to Brooklyn. You know, I'm thinking about the forward that comes to mind is uh, Dorian Finney-Smith, player that's been with Dallas for the last three, four years, somebody I thought was probably going to end his career in Dallas. Of course, they traded him down there to Brooklyn. And, um, you know, they don't have the wing depth anymore. That's why a guy like... Uh, you know, Dustin Holiday is so important in regards to what they're doing right now because they lost a lot defensively when you let Dorian walk out the door. So I'm just curious to see how they make up for that. <clears throat> Much has been said of them trying to make up for lo losing um, um, Jalen Brunson last year, and, of course, they brought Kyrie in to do that job. But I think the more glaring hole that they're about to see is the defensive side on the defensive side of the ball now, when it comes to – uh, just having that Swiss Army knife that's no longer going to be out there for them uh, in Dorian. So um, we understand that uh, LeBron and AD will play today. That game 
uh, they'll be available for, and, and D'Lo will not play. He's, a, he's officially listed out. So, you know, we have the guard depth. We'll be fine, I believe. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, now it's just time for the Lakers to figure out who they are, man. There's two things going on. We got to find out who we are, and we got to win the basketball games we're in. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just going to, you know, uh, it's going to be about learning that data from, from who's going to play well in this uniform, whose game carries on to the road. You know, obviously we're in a different arena tonight, so we'll – you know, a guy like Beasley shoot just as well in Dallas as he did at Staples or, or crypto, whatever you call it. Um, these are the things we want to learn about the players we've just picked up. How many of them are going to play well on the road? Is, is Bamba going to have another good game? You know, what will the rotations be like? That's up to coach. Uh, and if so, how much, how, how much of what we do is going to be leaning on players that we leaned on in the first half of the season? Troy Brown, uh, Winyan Gabriel, Austin Reeves, uh, Dennis Schroeder. Uh, I, I just wonder how, how much are we going to lean on those guys, Lonnie Walker? How much of those guys are going to get their minutes versus the new guys uh, who are coming in and really, really amplifying this roster overall? Um, so, you know, a good combination of both, I think, is the right way to go. Everybody's young. Uh, the new guys are solid as heck. The old guys that we kept are guys we like to keep. It's not like these were guys that also we would have rather let go of. No, everybody on the team, I approve of personally everybody and so I'm, I'm ready to, to work I'm ready to learn about Devon Reed he's the last guy on the list to find out about um and so hopefully he'll get some playing time in it in a game that I think we can have a good lead in man hopefully we can have some some garbage time in this game obviously you don't want to disrespect uh Luca and, and Kyrie but you know it takes more than two two bodies to to beat a full team and that's what we have right now we have a full team that's going to be attacking them from many angles that has more size than what they should be able to rebound over and defend and <clears throat> if we if we play to our level if if we play to the level we're supposed to and not down to them uh th then we would expect this to be a win for us we really expect that now granted you got to deal with high level talent like christian wood as well and if he steps into his own offensively he can cater a great deal to what they do successfully but if he doesn't turn into a defender today i don't know where the defense is coming from uh in regards to guarding ad and and keeping Vanderbilt off the off the rim and, and keeping Bomba off the rim. I don't know who they got that's going to be able to have any success against them. Dwight Powell, not going to get it done. He ain't going to be enough. So that's where I want us to, to flex. I want us to go inside. Or, more, more accurately said, go with the bigger guys because a lot of them want to shoot jumpers. But it doesn't matter. As long as they are taller than the people in front of them, we should be able to uh, take advantage. So excited about this one? Um, for like I said, unfortunately, no D-Lo today. But uh, given the fact that our stars did not have their greatest statistical game, and given the fact this is a daytime afternoon Sunday game, we know it's hard to wake up for these type of games. I expect Bron and AD to give us a little extra emphasis. I would be very disappointed if they come out sluggish with everything we have on the line, knowing the reputation of games like this in the daytime. You just, I'll say this: this is this is this is my. It's my opinion. I think LeBron James has had a better historical record in games like this than the Lakers have as a team in games like this. In other words, ABC games on a Sunday afternoon, historically, that's Bron Central. He's always had a great time displaying his very best. But if you look back at the Lakers, we play on ABC, it's hit or miss, man. It's hit or miss, especially on the daytime on a Sunday. It's just hit or miss. Games on the road, 12-30 game in Dallas. It's just the quintessential game where the Lakers get blown out by 25, and you just hate seeing this game on the schedule. But given the fact it is an entirely different dynamic, given the fact that we are legitimately better than Dallas on paper, uh, given the fact that they are still learning themselves and they're not exactly on the string, um, all of this should just cater to itself to us having a better than normal matchup for what it is that I'm used to with these situations. So, yeah, that's where we're at. Under a min, uh, under an hour to go before tip off, and I'm about as excited as I've been for a regular season game in a very long time. Uh, I just know that the playoffs started a couple games ago <laughs> for us, and so we should be as excited to see this matchup as any playoff matchup based on how real this is for our team in terms of winning and needing to in order to make the playoffs. Um, you know, one of the things that I want to get 
kind of kind of worked into is kind of paying attention to who's doing what else is going on around the Western Conference so we can kind of have a better understanding of who we're playing, uh, who we're fighting against in the standings. Um, New Orleans is a team you want to pay attention to. San Antonio and some of the matchups they've had are against some of the teams that we're facing. Uh, the Thunder, Golden State. Um, you know, these are teams that we just want to pay attention to. Obviously, the Clippers. Um, you know, the, the Pelicans are so important, you know, because of all the different implications that have to do with us and them. The draft pick, the standings, uh, home court advantage for some reason we happen to match up somehow. All of these things matter when it comes to that particular squad. So anytime you see the Pelicans going up against anybody, you want to know that they lost straight up. <clears throat> no matter who they play, you want them to lose. Um, Dallas, Timberwolves, all of these teams, as I said, the whole West needs to win. Everybody at the top needs to keep us off of their backside, and everybody at the bottom needs to fight to get to the top. So there's nobody that should be chilling, whether you're at the top or not. And those teams that chill will fall. Those teams that don't have health will fall. Um, but that's all there is to it. you got to be healthy right now. And, uh, you know, with Phoenix coming along, like I said, us, Sacramento doesn't seem to be backing off from anybody. I'm, I'm curious to see who's not going to make it. I think it's going to be a team that you don't expect to fall out that will fall out based on all of this parity. Somebody who, who's, who's there in the playoff hunt may not make the playoffs. And so that's what I'm saying. The teams at the top better keep fighting, man. They better keep fighting because at the end of the day, the Western Conference has basically inherited two new contenders in the Lakers and the Suns. That's the way I look at it. Two new contenders. I don't know that Dallas is a strong enough contender without interior defensive presence. But when you bring together what Phoenix has and you look at what the Lakers have, two new contenders just simply have to deal with these teams so uh and then you look at the clippers they're not getting any worse so you must win everybody must win i expect this game to be extremely physical even though dallas doesn't necessarily play a physical game most of the time tonight it will be if they want to win they better get physical and uh you know i'd like to see us turn and turn some de non-defensive players into the de defender defensive players tonight <laughs> christian wood ain't known for defending nobody Make him use his fouls. Kyrie Irving does not want to be in the block sealed off with anybody bigger than him. I can promise you that. All the different things that Kyrie's great at. Guarding huge people is not one of them. You want to find him in the mismatch and hunt him. Hunt him. I would. And, and that's what I would be looking for if he was on my team, too, for other people to try to hunt him. So I'd be trying to hide him in certain situations. And if he gets stops, you tip your hat and you say good job, just like you would with Steph Curry or any other player like that. But honestly smaller guy not known for defense i'm a, i'm attacking him i'm attacking him and I'm, I'm making him feel it tonight so if Kyrie's gonna go off for 40 he's also gonna have to guard somebody who's gonna be chasing around or what have you um you know what i mean be physical at the end of the day these are two of the best players in the game you know luka Doncic and Kyrie irvin so you will respect them as such and if you don't bring the intensity necessary they will dance on you they'll walk out of there with a victory and that'll be it i'm not cool with that we gotta win we gotta win every game we're in and so given the fact that we have a better team than them, I'm not really overly ready to give them the respect necessary for us to just tip their hat. No, push them, bump them, send them to the line, make them feel you, and ultimately make it so that other people beat you, in my opinion. Um, you know, I, I want to see somebody else beat me than Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic. So that's that's what I have to say, man. Put our, put our physical guys on them. Um, <laughs> believe it or not, this is a game where you wish Patrick Beverly was in rotation because you would want him to hound Kyrie a little bit. But, you know, we had to give him up because we just couldn't use him properly. But I, I'm glad Vanderbilt is here. And uh, I'm going to be looking for Dennis Schroeder to hound, man. Dennis Schroeder is going to be the guy. He's going to be the guy that's going to be quick enough. I believe Coach will be um, eager to put him on Kyrie Irving in certain situations. And, and he's going to be he's going to have the foot speed to have to try to deal with him. And we're going to need help to obviously help him out. Because if you're only putting one person on Kyrie, it's a nightmare for you, no matter who that one person is. Uh, so... It is what it is. And then Luka Doncic, if you leave him open for any reason, he can go for a 75, 100 points and and, and walk out of here <laughs> with a win just the same. So, um, you know, the, the, the two-man uh, duo tandem there will play off one another, as I expect. Uh, they'll get big numbers regardless of how we defend them. But the key is to make sure that they don't have an easy night. The key is to make sure that they don't find themselves comfortably walking into their spots and not having anybody defending them. So... You know, um, I do expect this to be a high-scoring matchup. I expect 
Tim Hardaway to have a huge part in it, a massive part in it, and I expect him to have a hot night. He doesn't he doesn't have bad nights at home when he's healthy. He's going to shoot, and he's going to shoot a lot. And given the fact that they're going to have those two players drawing so much attention, uh, we would be foolish not to consider him as dangerous as anybody in the league on a night like this. Uh, particularly now that the period now that the, the, now that Kyrie Irving is on this team Tim Hardaway Jr. is one of the most dangerous shooters in basketball that is my entire thought that's my entire thought so people just need to understand that no matter what's going on he is significantly more dangerous because now you can't afford to pay him as much attention and he's not the type of person you can afford to not pay a lot of attention so he's the guy that scares me tonight if he's going for 30, 35 points, we're in a lot of trouble. Uh, so keep an eye on him and and, 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 and treat him uh, like, like he's Clay Thompson or somebody because that's exactly how dangerous he's going to be for their unit from here on out. So um, I think that's what I want to say. There was something else that I wanted to bring to the table in regards to this matchup. I don't remember what it is, but, of course, I made an entirely different video about it last night that I encourage everybody to go check out. This is just me trying to kill time before the game. Uh, because I'm very eager for it to start. And so, yeah, man, uh, keep an eye on Jason Kidd. He knows our team. This is one of the assistant coaches that won a championship with us in 2020. If anybody has a different way of approaching AD and Braun, is him. I mean, he's going to throw stuff at us that should likely, in theory, be a bit more disruptive to them too. Unfortunately enough, though, he's not going to have an answer for some of the other things that we have going on in this roster. So as long as we're not AD Braun eccentric, I don't think he'll be able to to really do much with us i really don't so yeah i'm walking into this game very confident that means it's a trap game so if the lakers don't see it as a trap game they're foolish but to be honest with you i don't see us being caught off guard by anybody anymore by the structure of this the way this is set up there is no trap games there is no games where you think you're going to win there's no games where you're playing against a lesser opponent none of that i don't care if you're playing against a bunch of 10 year olds you need to win so that's all there is to it. It don't matter who we're going up against. If we're not wide awake, then we've already messed up. So that's pretty much what I got to say, man. And this is what I got. BDL44, I thank you all for watching.